I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. They say the Obama administration is running roughshod over their rights. Today's rally is about religious freedom. Don't let anybody coerce you into thinking it's about contraception or abortion. All these things are part of it. But it is about one thing first and foremost, religious freedom in the United States of America. And this noon, a few hundred people gathered outside the government center building in Goshen in what organizers say was a rally for religious freedom. Protesters, including members of Orange County Right to Life and Tea Party groups, were voicing their opposition to the Obama administration's health and human services mandate that insurers be forced to pay for birth control for employees of religious institutions. It's a mandate that will require most employers to provide in their health plan free contraception, sterilization, and abortion-inducing uh, drugs. And um, you know, we believe in the Constitution of the United States of America, and this is taken away that right to uh, practice our religion and you know we need to oppose this and stand against this. But Organizers of today's Stand Up for Religious Freedom rally say their immediate goal is to generate even stronger opposition to the HHS mandate. The Goshen event was reportedly one of about 140 gatherings held today throughout the country. He is an Ulster County doctor who is now facing drug charges. 62 year old Dr. Wayne Longmore who runs a walk-in doctor's office in Woodstock, has been charged with prescribing thousands of painkillers to patients who paid cash but had no legitimate need for the drugs. Longmore was arrested after his office was raided by federal agents this week. Their investigation began when pharmacies alerted authorities to the high number of painkiller prescriptions being written by Longmore, including more than 650 for hydrocodone in just a month. Dr. Longmore's medical license had been suspended for a year back in 2004 for practicing after being diagnosed with a bipolar disorder. In Sullivan County, an effort is underway to raise $50,000, money that is needed to help repair the historic Halls Mills Covered Bridge in Claryville. That was seriously damaged when Hurricane Irene swept through the region last August. Neversink River floodwaters destroyed a section of the bridge's west pier, putting it at risk of collapse. FEMA has allocated $400,000 for repairs, but the county may opt not to provide their required $50,000 share for a bridge that only now serves foot traffic. Reporter Leonard Sparks will have the full story on the community push to restore the covered bridge in the Sunday edition of the Times-Herald Record. Well, nothing set in stone yet, but uh, the budget trimming continues in the Newburgh School District, where board members uh, rolled out another $3 million with the proposed cuts, targeting 34 positions, part of the ongoing effort to uh, close next year's preliminary budget gap of $13.7 million. Residents crammed into the NFA auditorium last night to hear board members uh, make a series of proposed reductions that include uh, the cutting of the High, high school crew team and the elimination of 21 elementary teaching assistant positions. So far, three budget work sessions have resulted in proposals to cut more than 40 teacher positions, four administrators, 45 teaching assistants, and 42 other full-time positions. Another two and a half million dollars worth of cuts would have to be made uh, during another work session that's scheduled for next Thursday. Ulster County Executive Michael Hine has rolled out a plan to give tax breaks for first-time home buyers and larger property tax exemptions to some county property owners. The proposal, if county legislators go along, would uh, give first-time home buyers who meet eligibility criteria a 50% tax exemption in the first year of ownership. The exemption amount uh, would then decrease each year through the fifth and final year of the program. Several legislators say they'll give the county execs initiatives a hard look, provided they don't result in any county property tax increases. And it's a musical with a serious theme. Thursday, young student actors from Orange County schools were at the Paramount Theater in Middletown rehearsing musical numbers for a show that carries an anti-bullying message. It's called Letters to Daddy, the musical key to bully free. Otisville Elementary School teacher John O'Neill and former ESPN producer Will Rodman put the show together. It debuted at the Lyceum in Sugarloaf last October, and the local kids doing the singing and dancing hope to get through to their peers in a way adults cannot.
it's not adults telling children you know not to bully it's children telling children not to bully and talking about their own experiences and feeling it from their heart and the passion that they have for something that they relate to and it's so nice to see children just like us in the audience enjoying it and really getting the message. I feel like this performance will show the kids like people go through the same thing that you go through. The group of kids that we have, the 16 kids from many districts across the county, they have it. They have what it takes to give that message because as the kids said before, it's something that's natural, that they connect with, that they're not acting. So it's been a terrific process. Organizations throughout Orange County have shown support for Letters to Daddy. County Grant helped uh, get it off the ground, and the Paramount in Middletown is playing host to the latest round of performances. More than 2,000 area school children uh, will watch the anti-bullying show next Friday with public performances Saturday night, uh, March 31st at 7, and Sunday, April 1st at 2 p.m. <laughs> Sunshine and warm temperatures dominated our weather this week, making for perfect weather to get the kayak out of storage and into the water. Unfortunately, outdoor recreation could be a challenge this weekend, Saturday. We'll be mostly cloudy with rain arriving by midday. The high should reach the low 60s. More clouds and rain in the forecast for Sunday, and it'll be cooler, with temperatures climbing only into the upper 50s. Make Record Online your place to visit uh, for breaking news and get a complete look at what's happening as well as the features you enjoy in the weekend editions of the Times Herald Record. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter. <laughs>